Animarum Salus is Latin for salvation of souls. This name represents two private Catholic associations. The first, Friends of Jesus Christ High Priest. The second, Mary, Mother of the Church. Both of these associations have borne many fruits since their foundation. One fruit that has come into existence during the last year is the Divine Mercy for the Dying, a ministry that prepares people for eternal life. I've noticed in the last 15 years that so many of our residents have died alone, and that is something that just bothered me. And, and Carol Masuga and, and Father Matt Settle um, had a proposal about this chaplet of Divine Mercy and praying at the bedside and it just all fit together and I thought this is perfect to minister to our families and to our residents as they're actively dying. It's such a beautiful promise uh, St. Faustina received from our Lord when he appeared to her about this praying the Chapel of Divine Mercy at the bedside of the dying because our Lord states that he will come not as a just judge but a merciful savior. I have had so many families and actually some of the residents have thanked me um, for all that we've done with this Chapel of Divine Mercy. And many of the families, we introduce this to them, so it's a way of evangelization um, because they've never heard of it and all the promises that go with it. It's such a beautiful thing. One of the fruits of the association is the Divine Mercy for the Dying Ministry. And we go to people who are dying whether they're in the nursing home or at home. And we make sure that a priest anoints all the Catholic ones. One of the most touching moments was when I went to a lady who was dying in the nursing home. Her daughter had just left, and so it was just her and me. I could really feel our Lord inside of her and she passed when my hour was almost done. That was so profound to me to be there, and, and I felt so honored and blessed because she didn't die alone. And found out from the nurses that her daughter was very happy for me to be there, and she would be very grateful that she did not die alone. My first experience with the uh, Ministry of Mercy, I had gotten a call from our coordinator, and she asked me if I would go to the home of one of our parishioners. And they knew I was coming to say the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. But much to my surprise, they had no idea what it was. And I said, well, I made copies for you. I have the rosaries. Would you like to join me? And once it was over, again, to my surprise, the wife said to me, she said, can we recite this? And I said, well, sure you can. And she said, oh, I thought it only could be said by someone like you. And I said, no, I'm nobody special. I'm just somebody who loves and cares for you. I think the beautiful aspect of it is it connects us with people that we maybe have never met before and um, it opens up for Our Lady to bring people in our lives that we have never met. <laughs> but I was really ready to do that. This was really a, a step I was ready to take. But then the Lord had some different plans and my life got a little bit busier. So when those calls started coming in to go pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet, I wasn't able to. I had uh, other obligations that were in my life at the time. But then it, it, the whole idea of the ministry is to be there spiritually for a dying person and, or, or whoever is whoever's passing, you know, whoever is in that active state of dying throughout the whole world, not necessarily just at Mary Hill Manor. And that spiritual aspect really kind of inspired to pray that Divine Mercy Chaplet at any time, daily actually, um, for whoever Our Lady calls you to pray it for. Um, and that, that kind of opened a door for me. I didn't necessarily have to be physically present at the bedside of somebody who was dying. I could be there spiritually present at the bedside of somebody who was dying. And it not necessarily be somebody I know or somebody that's even local. The Lord can do beautiful things with 
with our the being part of the mystical body of Christ, we, He can connect us in some beautiful ways. So I started praying the, the chaplet and needing a little bit of discipline. I have a really nice elderly friend, Poots, and she took it upon herself to call me every day at around three o'clock and pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet, which is exactly what I needed. Another fruit born in the past year is the One Minute Reflections that were produced and aired on Relevant Radio for four months, promoting the dignity and the sacredness of human life. Hello, my name is Father Walter, a priest of the Clerical Association Hello, of Mary. Hello, my name is Father Mark, and I am a priest of the Clerical Association of Mary. Hello, my name is Dr. Carol Masuga a spiritual advisor of the Clerical Association My name is Father Michael, and I am a priest of the Clerical Association of Mary, Mother of the Church, with a reflection on the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. The anointing of the sick is one of the sacraments of healing intended for those suffering from any grave illness, mental or physical, for the elderly, or for anyone undergoing any serious surgery. These circumstances are often accompanied by fear and anxiety about what the future may hold. No one should have to suffer alone. Those who receive this sacrament are given special graces from the Holy Spirit which grant peace, strength, and courage to endure suffering and unity with our Lord in his own passion. If you would like to receive the anointing of the sick, call a Catholic priest or parish to request it. You do not have to suffer alone. Hello, my name is Father Matt a priest of the Clerical Association of Mary, Mother of the Church, with a reflection on human dignity from St. John Paul the Great. Each of us must face suffering in this life. Suffering can be a burden for you and can make you feel like a burden to others. Uniting your suffering with Christ transforms this depressing feeling. As his body hung on the cross to bring salvation to the world, Jesus Christ defeated evil by offering his suffering for you and me. Through baptism, you and I are now members of that same body of Christ, which still suffers in the world today, and therefore still gains the victory. In reality, your suffering makes you neither a victim nor a burden to yourself or others. It makes you a victor with Jesus. In the terrible battle between the forces of good and evil, may your suffering, in union with the cross of Christ, be victorious. To find out more about Animarum Salus, including membership, visit our website, animarumsalus.com. Please prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. God bless you.